let's start with a demo on how I often see grass being drawn in drawings. We start with a clump of grass, then we add another clump of grass, then we add another clump of grass, and then another clump of grass, and so on, and so on, and so on. We, we basically keep adding clumps of grass all over the place. And we know what a clump of grass looks like. It, it has sort of a roughly semicircular shape where it's highest in the center, where the clumps of, uh, where the blades of grass are pointing upwards more. And then towards the sides, the blades of grass quite possibly bend over, giving our semicircular approximate shape. And as we go further away, we make our clumps of grass smaller because we know that things get smaller as they get further away. And so we're doing all of this. Now, although we have a reference, can't say we're really looking at it too closely at this stage, but let's face it, we know what a blade of grass looks like. So we can just keep drawing more of these blades of grass. And you know, once we start, it is a bit hard to know where to stop because maybe a few more will make it look a bit more grassy rather than a bit more like, I don't know, things floating in a soup or something. So we'll just keep adding some more tufts of grass everywhere because that's what lawn is, isn't it? It's just a large amount of tufts of grass all close together. So the more we put together, the more it's going to look like grass. That's it. So what's a better way of drawing our grass? Well, firstly, we're actually going to look at the reference of our grass. We're not going to draw generic grass from our imagination, but we're actually going to look at this particular grass for some very important details. Firstly, the shape of the grass and how the different blades of this grass sit, because this is a cut lawn, so it's a bit different to tufts of grass. We're going to be looking at to see how the shadows fall between the various tufts of grass and work out how in at least a few spots we can indicate these shadows more accurately. Now, we don't want to put the same amount of detail over the whole scene, not even over the whole scene in the one spot. We want to create some gaps and leave some room for our imagination to fill those details in. But we still need in this very closest part down the bottom to establish a lot more detail than we're going to use in the rest of our scene as well as looking at the shape of the blades of grass, the directions, the ways that the blades of grass fall from this angle, the way they look from this angle in this closest part, where we're actually looking down on top of the blades of grass more, whereas further back, we're looking more side on at the blades of grass. So we actually have a different, if you like, shaped object that we're looking at here at the base of our scene as opposed to further up. But connected with that, we also want to pay attention to the way the direction changes as it moves up, but also the way the scale changes. The blades of grass become smaller, obviously, the further back they go, but they actually become rapidly smaller. They rapidly become basically too small to draw. And getting that transition from blades of grass where we can actually, at least in parts of our drawing, indicate blades of grass to where we really can't draw a blade of grass and have it sit correctly in, at the proper scale for this scene. We need to get that, that transition happening correctly. And what I often do is I'll put a bit of a mark of dots across my scene at some point where I want to make sure that basically all my transitions have happened by that point to that size. And so if you like their reference point so that I don't end up drawing too much detail too large, too far up my scene, because that's going to throw the whole sense of depth, the, the whole sense of this is a, a plane moving backwards at a certain angle. I need to have a consistency in my marks getting smaller and disappearing and totally blending into each other. That's con totally consistent with the sense of distance that I'm trying to create. And you can see now that I'm actually just doing the tiniest of marks. And I'm not really trying to represent any tufts 
at all. I'm really more giving the sense of a very minor textured surface so far back. It's almost as if I'm drawing a carpet. Now, silhouette edges are always important, and I want to therefore avoid drawing a straight smooth line across the back here. I do have the negative spacing of these shadows coming down onto the grass. So there is a, so there is a silhouette edge, and I, I want to try and show that. And the best way I can show that is by having, I think, vertical hatching coming down onto the grass at right angles, because that, that kind of gives that soft, even but tufted kind of edge, much, much as a carpet would have. And now I'm really just doing dots to establish some areas of, of um, effect, if you like, of how these blades of grass, where we're just really seeing the tips of them all lined up behind each other. We're not really seeing any blades of grass. We're not really seeing any shadows. Everything is at such a small scale that we're going to represent the effect of that just with dots. And then finally, I add a few sections of, if you like, um, uh, overall texture just by doing lots of dots close together. I'm basically exploring and experimenting. I don't have a, a pattern that I use to do this. Every, every time we need to look at our reference, look at the particular grass, look at the scale that we're needing to draw and transition on and work out the best effects we can make, we can create with our marks to, to show that, to create this feeling of grass that's quite close to us down the bottom and moving backwards. There is no stock technique to use except the, te except the technique of careful observation and creating the effect. So I'll finish this and then in a second we'll compare it with that first drawing of the grass I did and we'll just see which one we think is more effective. But I hope we already know that. So a few minor dots and dashes. It is kind of hard to know where to stop. We can, if we're not careful, go too far with this sort of thing. But I think this is as good a place as any to stop. So here we have our finished grass. Another example of drawing the effect of our subject rather than the actual detail. Now exactly how much detail we want to draw down here and exactly how we make our marks will also depend on things such as if we're going to put some marker tone or some colour over the top of things as well. But in terms of representing the actual shapes and the size of the shapes, the scale of the shapes and the effect of the shapes of the blades of grass, this is the sort of thing I'm thinking about doing when grass appears in my scene. But it really does depend on how prominent it is. It's clearly very prominent in this scene and therefore there is more detail and a larger size than I imagine we'd be mostly using to draw for grass. But if we had an object that we were drawing here that we we're looking at quite close up, then it could sit here and this could well be a credible way to draw the grass around it. It's certainly more credible than going back to our little symbolic tufts of grass that look more like wallpaper or wrapping paper, some decorative graphic design element than actual grass. And while I really did exaggerate this a bit to make my point, this sort of approach to drawing grass is so often at the core of drawings I see where grass has been a necessary element. We need to stop using symbols to represent objects and observe these objects more closely, work out what's the effect of all of this detail, and then how can I represent that effect? And grass gives a great example to do that. I'll post this drawing on my channel community page. If you want to have a go drawing some grass, can I recommend actually using a photo reference of grass and not just drawing grass from your imagination? Because that's more likely to end up starting to look a bit like this. When we draw actual grass, then we're observing a lot more and we're going to observe some things that we don't normally observe when we look at grass. Because let's face it, most of the time, we don't look at grass all that closely. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Bit of an unusual subject, but I've been asked a number of times for a demo on drawing grass, so here it is. But whatever you're drawing and however you're drawing it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.